And welcome back, this is Baller Scuba with another StarCraft 2 commentary. My opponent in this upcoming match is Jumbo. Jumbo is ranked 9th in his Diamond Division with 677 points and 141 wins. And you can tell by that right there, he is random. And here we are in the game. I have spawned as the Blue Terran in the Southwest up against Jumbo. He is the Red Zerg player in the Northwest. The map is Backwater Gulch. And I love these nameplates for the early game. Let's get rid of them now. And as you can see, he is a good APM guy. Never quite sure what to think about that. But he has these guys set. Once they hatch, they go straight into the mineral line. Um, the Backwater Gulch, it's a good map. I like this map. It has a lot of interesting features to, to it. Overlord on the way for him as well. Don't know exactly what build he's going to be going for here, but I know with, m with my history against Zerg players, I always like to go for the early aggressive builds. That is always, always, always the best route for me I've seen. Um, I don't know if I go for it this time. Maybe I talked myself out of it because I don't have that great of a history against third players. So he's up to 13 drones here, and he should be making something. Something? Oh, it looks like he's going to go 14, 15. Good lord, he's late on whatever he's going for. Usually it's 13 and then build something. Here we go. What is he going for? He is going for an expansion, it looks like. So it's going to be a 15 hatch for Jumbo. And it looks like I was unable to stop it with my SUV. Did not get there in time, even though I picked the right one. He's going to go try and harass my SCV. So what I'm going to do here, and I like this move, is I'm going to actually halt production, attack him, send another SCV to attack him, and he dies. My guy does not. He might have been able to finish this guy off, but it would have been an even trade. With this, I do get the trade early, and I win. It's awesome. So we do have... What I'm going for here is two racks expansion. After he went for the 15 racks, he got up to, looks like, 17 harvesters, built a spawning pool. So you never, even though you go for the economic build, you know, everybody says, oh, 15 hatch. Most people don't know. You have to go for the spawning pool immediately afterwards because you do need the defenses early. You can't just go for a pure economic build all the time. I do have my two racks on the way, so it looks like I'm going for a two racks expand. I simply do not have the minerals to expand yet. And this is pretty much the equivalent of a 15 hatch for a Terran player, so it looks like we're going for pretty mirrored builds here. He's moving five drones down to the expansion here. I'm not exactly sure why. He is getting queens out of both hatcheries after that spawning pool went up. No gas yet. Even though he's all the way up to 22 harvesters, he does have the overlords positioned all around the map. One guarding the... the wow. It looks like this was the first overlord, I would believe. Uh, the, the the first one that spawned, he sent it immediately over here to make sure I wasn't there. When he found out I wasn't, he moved down here with a drone to find out where I was. We do have the first Zerglings out uh, at the four and a half minute mark, it looks like. And he is starting to inject from both of his queens into his hatcheries. Meanwhile, my expansion is up. I do have a bunker out up front. That is how I like to do the two racks expansion. I don't care that I don't get all my minerals back when I salvage the bunker anymore. I still want to get the bunker up, especially against Zerg players. It is very important. So I do have four marines in there because I still only have marines right now. I do have a refinery up. Looks like just saturating it right now. Do have three racks on the way, third one is on the way at least, his zergs, zerglings sorry, are out near the Zelnaga Tower making sure I don't go for an early attack and now it looks like he's going to send all but one of them in, trying to get some scouting done, try to figure out what I'm doing. Uh, against a Terran player it is not safe to send your overlord into his base because my marines will kill him. So he sees the bunker and he smartly runs off. He only loses one Zergling and of course the other one will heal by the time anybody goes for a major attack. Unless 
he goes for the rocks down here. Now this was a smart move and I did not catch it. Let's see here. Can I actually... Yeah. So I can see the rocks from there, but I did not notice that, that these were going down. I cannot hear those attacking Zerglings. So those rocks are going to go down, and he's going to have a backdoor entrance into my base. That was a very, very smart move to do early on, and it really helped him out in the long run. I'll, I'll give that away right now. So I do have three racks up, and it looks like I'm actually already going for a fourth rack so once that orbital command is finished. And there's going to be a fifth rack as well. Uh, so really, I'm kind of behind on my build. I'm not used... Once again, for, I'm still rusty. I'm not even going to lie. I'm rusty when it comes to all my different builds. And he does have a third hatchery on the way at the eight minute mark. That is an early third base but he is comfortable with his map control right now and what I mean by that is that he th he knows with this zergling here that if I go for an attack pretty much any attack that goes down from this main ramp to my base he's gonna spot very early on and he's gonna have enough time to get not uh, to get quite a few uh, quite a few units out very quickly he does have spine crawlers coming up or sorry, spore crawlers going up inside his base. They are detectors, so if I went for a raven strategy, he would already have a counter to that. Now the rocks are down. He still has six zerglings down here, pretty much near my base, and I do not know they're there, but he does send all but one of them away, and here's where I'm like, ah, crap, he took out my rocks. So I send one, zer one, one marine to take out the one zergling, and I finally take him out but not before he's able to see exactly what's going on here he can see my saturation he knows how much I'm getting he does have a queen up at the third base already and he's sending another overlord to scout what's going on in my main base I do have five racks up engineering bay and that's pretty much it I have nope I have average average minerals and gas right now it's not good it's not great it's not bad though he does yeah the spine the spore crawler it is a little bit in the way but that's worth it for a zerg player because they are so weak anti-air he does have a spire as well as an infestation pit on the way there's the infestation pit and there's a spire he's got a ton of tech it looks like he's going for uh, ground armor level one ground weapons level one he's going for baneling speed as well as four mutalisks and now if he's able to get those mutalisks out early and move them inside my base he will have a hell of a time doing a lot of damage and here we go he's starting to build his army now he does have seven banelings 24 zerglings and four mutalisks on the way but i am going in for an attack here oh oh look at that if i had attacked maybe 10 to 15 seconds earlier it would be a completely different story, but here I'm forced to micro as best as I can, and I really have no choice. I'm surrounded by Zerglings. I might as well just stop and let my Marines and Marauders die. But if I had gotten there before those Banelings had finished, it would have been a completely different story, and this game might have been over. That is the importance of timing, and I just did not have timing this, this game. And that's what being rusty will do to you. If I had gotten there, just a, a few seconds earlier gotten there in time to take on those banelings before they actually got out of their uh, what do you what would you even call them got out of their cocoons w what do you call it when huh whatever so I am going for an expansion here I wanted to get that third base but because he did have a guy on the Zelnaga tower he had a few people there a few other things he was able to spot my SUV chase him down with my w with his zerglings which do have speed now that's why they have wings and it does increase their weapon speed I don't know their move speed but it does so much for you, you always want to get speed for your zerglings if you're gonna go for them as your attacking units he's has eight mutilists out now oh ten he has quite a bit, and he's now going for his fourth base, 13 minutes. It's now going to be four base Zergling against two base Terran, and I don't need to tell you what that means for me in the long run. I do have my second engineering bay up, along with a factory, and I'm going for the armory here. 
because my upgrades are really late. I mean, look how far behind. I have 700 minerals, 400 gas. That is way too much. Uh, looking at the income, it's not even close. And that's what the beauty of being uh, Zerg can get you, is if I don't attack in time, you just you just absolutely destroy me in harvester count. I mean, he's getting so much more gas than I am. The minerals are about even, thanks to my mules. Which, this one's about to die. And there it goes. And he's just checking all the bases here. He ha he sees, f he sends five bailings, and it looks like, yeah, he sees that I don't have a third base here. Um, so he knows that he's got to be ahead. Meanwhile, I'm sending my army in, trying to, you know, trying to apply as much pressure as I can. These five bailings are going to roll in. I don't spot them, and then boom, there they go. And they took out probably about five or six of my five or six of my SCVs and here thanks once again to the Zelnaga Tower he knows I'm on the way and so he starts making 22 banelings and they pop right before I show up so I'm moving in and I'm thinking oh my god I'm gonna win this he has no army and he left his overlords out to die so I'm taking out all the mutilists all the all the overlords. He doesn't have very many banelings left, but look at that. Two banelings and it took out how many of my marines? I mean banelings are so good, so good. They do thirty nine damage against my marines. And remember my marines only have fifty five health. Once I use one of the stim packs, it's down to forty five health. And these guys take off thirty nine. That leaves six which is what these guys do at, with one upgrade. He's got he, he's got the Zerglings at 2-2 two, two, as well as the Banelings at 2-2 two, two. that ups their light damage to 43. One more and they should be able to take out my Marines with one shot. That's insane and remember it does do splash damage. So I'm trying to I'm trying to find an effective counter to that. He does have Infestors on the way. I'm actually going for Thor's, that is not the smartest idea, but it's what I have. I should be going for siege tanks and banshees and vikings. But I do have a starport out, and I'm going for medevacs. I should be going for a drop, but look at this. He does have the, the mutilus well positioned here, so that if I did go for a drop, I would not make it there. The mutilus would be able to take that out. So I only have one missile turret in range of these guys. These guys are a flock, let's be honest. Oh my gosh, they're a murder of mutilisks. And I really have nothing to counter him. I mean, I'm like, oh, fine, I'll send my Thor in and try not to let him know what I have. Which is really the same thing that I've had this entire game. But he is going to see my medevacs come out of there, so he's he should know that I have medevacs. Uh, he gets them out uh, after the Thor leaves. He should uh, magic box trick right over here. Um, but he's got so many units right now. Look at all that. What does he have? He's got 24 banelings, 5 infestors, 4 queens, 14 mutilisks, and 60 zerglings. I mean, let's look at the army. Does it, could that be any more clear? He is absolutely dominating right now. He still has 3 thousand minerals so I mean there's definitely more he could be doing in terms of what he's spending but he doesn't really care right now and I don't blame him for not really caring he's so far ahead in this game so I'm trying to go for a, for his base over here but he's he's had control of these Zalnaga towers the entire time he has an overlord watching those so I mean he knows exactly what's going on when I'm going to attack when I'm going to do anything he finally moves the overlords out of the way he's bunching up his army moving in I'm basically just trying to get one of the bases and I'm hoping that if I take out one of the bases he will be screwed but he's not because he has this and this Thor stood no chance. It fell behind the rest of my army because I don't micro properly, and that was it. And down goes everything. He throws down a fungal growth for good measure to try to take out the medevacs, which are already screwed because there's mutilists, and the mutilists are faster. Uh, they have a they have a move speed of 3.75, as opposed to well, I don't have any left to show you. Um, so there's that. I'm trying to get a third base up here. It would be 
right? Because right now it's one. That doesn't count because he mined it out. Two, three, no, three. So he's he's got three mining bases right now, as opposed to my one, which is this one right here. I stand no chance. It's three to one right now, pretty much. And I do finally get my, my third base up, but as you can see, I'm just so low on minerals that there's not much I can do at this point to come back. I only have 93 in terms of army. He has 165. He's going for a greater spire along with the adrenal glands, neuroparasite, Zerg melee attacks level three, and Zerg armor level three. So, I mean, these guys are going to be insane when they're finished. He's getting corruptors out. That greater spire once it finishes will allow him to get the brood lords, and that's when I know I'm screwed. He's getting a second hatchery here inside the main base. That's purely a unit production hatchery. He is not planning to get any minerals out of that, of course. Uh, these other bases are finally up, so it's now become one, two, three, four, five. Five base against two. I dump all my mules here trying to get as many minerals as I can. Now I'm finally caught up, but I still only have this army right here. And that's just not going to cut it. I'm trying to get uh, level three upgrades on my ground forces, but once again, against these banelings, it's not going to be able to do much. This is why I'm not a fan of fighting Zerg players. He's got 24 banelings on the way. I s uh, that could take out this entire army all by itself. But then on top of that, he's got brood lords on the way, a couple corruptors, and a ton of zerglings. I mean, this right here is enough to destroy what army I have. But he's moving in with these guys, and I spot them too late to try to repair that planetary fortress. It goes down. I'm sending my army in as a latch dis ditch effort here. I'm able to take the infestors out because he had him off. I caught him off guard, and he wasn't able to, s to spot them. These brood lords, though, they're able to do so much damage because these zerglings are holding me here. And it's just now that I realize that there are actually brood lords out. But I've already gotten surrounded. These Thors have cannot move and therefore they go down none of the brood lords suffered almost any damage at all i mean look at that 208 208 202 out of 225 the other two were just fine and i'm forced to gg i really had no choice here even though he didn't have that much of an army look at that 72 zerglings on the way he would have crushed me i do have t <laughs> i mean th so much more i could have done this game but first and foremost, don't let him get map control like this. This is insane. He already has half the map, and I'm still stuck on my quarter of the map. That's not acceptable. I either need to expand out early, or I need to attack early. I can't do this little hybrid of both and do neither. So, yeah, that's, that's how you play Zerg. And this was a random player, so I don't know if this was his off... Uh, his on race, his main race, or if, as one guy told me, I don't have an, uh, a main race. But he played it magnificently. Um, there were, of course, there's always stuff you can do better, but he he did a damn good job. So I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.